I'm Susan Lindquist. I'm a member of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, and I work at the Whitehead Institute at MIT. I work on a variety of different protein folding problems. The equally devastating aspect of protein folding pathology, the neurodegenerative diseases, because all of these diseases are diseases of protein misfolding. We do not have a single therapy that really fixes these problems. So um, these are some of the common and uncommon neurodegenerative diseases you might have heard about. Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, frontal temporal dementia, Huntington's ALS, and Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. And you can see these brown blobs inside of these cells. And those brown blobs are aggregated proteins, like those aggregates of, of fried egg I, I showed you about, showed you earlier. Um, and as I said, they're all, all of these neurodegenerative diseases are protein folding diseases, and there's not a single therapeutic strategy that cures the underlying protein pathology. We have some things that um, address some symptoms in some of these diseases, but for the most part, we're pretty helpless against them. This problem, as I mentioned earlier, is common to all organisms on Earth. Lipid biology is actually quite highly conserved. There certainly are differences in uh, lipid biology of, of yeast in human cells, but for example, cholesterol. Yeast use a very closely related uh, lipid called ergosterol for exactly the same reason that we use cholesterol to, to control the fluidity of membranes and to control the movement and density of proteins within those uh, membranes. And uh, they move packages of membrane-bounded proteins around the cell in very highly orchestrated ways, really the same way that a nerve cell will move dopamine around. Um, we, the yeast cells will move things like mating factors around. Uh, and lysosomes and peroxisomes, these are very complex organelles that are involved in doing very complicated functions. Some of them are involved in degrading proteins. Some of them are involved in um, a, a wide variety of metabolic actions that have to be segregated from the normal cytoplasm. These cells have both of those. They have autophagy. This is a process by which the cell actually directs its uh, degradation and eating machinery actually to eat up protein aggregates and get rid of them. Um, apoptosis, a programmed form of cell death. And move on to the very final stage of this talk. Um, we found that there were parallel effects. We moved back and forth between yeast and neurons, and we found that there were par parallel effects on uh, not just vesicle trafficking, but bursts of reactive nitrogen species, as I showed you in that protein blot, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction, and perturbations in middle ion homeostasis. So at least at this early, very simple cellular level, there's a lot of similarities. Candida is quite an amazing organism with how it can reproduce and spread through the body. And it can evade detection by the immune system. It's very clever how it can mutate and change and grow and evade uh, destruction. Some of the main symptoms are food allergies, irritability, yeast infections, sugar cravings, lack of concentration, swelling or constipation, fatigue, headaches, a thick white coating on your tongue, depression, skin rashes such as eczema, acne, immune system disorders. You may have white spots on your tongue, the whole tongue may be white, it may be red, with certain areas, certain white patches. If you rub on those areas, there may be bleeding. It can be very uncomfortable. It can actually be painful. It can spread to other parts of your body, like down your throat. There is one test that you can do to find out if you have candidiasis, and many people believe it to be very trustworthy. It's known as the spit test and is very easy to do. Here is how you can do it. When you wake up in the morning before eating breakfast, fill your mouth with saliva and spit it into a glass cup with water. Watch the cup for 30 minutes to an hour. If your saliva mixes with the water, sinks to the bottom of the cup, or if you can see the water becoming blurry with specks from your saliva, you might have cancer.